In today's video, we have an amazing treat for you today. If you're not familiar with the channel, I've been repairing guitars for 20 years, and what we like to do here on this channel is have companies send us guitars, we buy guitars, we even borrow guitars from you guys, and assess them just like we would do if you brought a guitar in to have it checked out because you got it new and what concerns or issues could we see. In today's video, we have a super unique guitar. This is a Valiente guitar, and I apologize for my American accent if I'm saying it wrong. Valiente guitars are built by an amazing luthier named Luigi, and these guitars are works of art. Now, if you're not familiar, I want you to understand that a luthier built instrument, what that means is, is that one person built this instrument. Um, he does have some assistance, but for the most part, everything is done by him, including the pickups are wound by him. We're gonna go over all the choices he made, some of the issues I found on the guitar that may, may be important to you to know about. And if you're looking at such an expensive instrument like this and something unique like this that you pretty much aren't gonna be able to put your hand on first, I wanted to give you as many details as possible to help you make the best choice. So let's take a second look at this case. You can see he put his beautiful logo on the front. I like the aged brass latches. Inside you have this beautiful <laughs> massive amount of red velvet, including this stitched in like blanket for the guitar. And then you have those strap locks. There you go, by Schaller. And then you get this beautiful book. It's your certificate of authenticity. Let's, let's go through it. You have the certificate of authenticity. It's all uh, signed by Luigi. And then every detail, so 25 and a half inch scale length, set in neck, full car, flame maple cordis on neck. It's a swamp ash body, buckeye burl top with an ebony fretboard, abalone inlays, Godo EV510BS bridge, Godo SGS510MGT tuners, graphite nut, stainless steel jumbo frets. The pickups are the Valente Skull set. I mean, this is a pretty intense little book here, including all the measurements right here, your full setup measurements right here. Maintenance guidelines, basically what he wants you to do, explains his warranty in detail, and then you can make some notes of your guitar. It's a nice little book. This is class all the way. This is the experience you hope to get when you buy a very expensive instrument made by a luthier. Kudos to you. Some interesting things about this particular Nebula carb model is that even though it has Godo locking keys, they have ebony buttons at the end that feel amazing. And it does have a graphite nut with an ebony fretboard, but it's a compound radius with Jeskar jumbo stainless steel frets, which are, in my opinion, the best fret material you can get, and they're made in Germany. I want to do something different. So this is a burl top. This is a rather thick piece of wood, as you can see right here. And then he uses a piece of winge sandwiched in between the two. I had him burst the sides purple. And the reason the sides are bursted purple instead of just all natural is because the back is also purple with a beautiful flamed maple neck that's set in. Now what's unique about this is I asked him to do the neck and the back satin and the front gloss. The headstock, of course, looks beautiful as well. So he did a fantastic job. All right, let's get into the geeky stuff. So put your guesses in what you think the weight's going to be. It is 6.68 pounds. That's right. This is sub seven pounds, uh, which is really cool. <laughs> Very, very cool, very light. On the back, we have it signed by Luigi and it's numbered. This is 131 and it says made in Italy. All of that written in his own, his own handwriting, which is a nice touch. The back of the guitar is absolutely gorgeous. He has the back plates recessed. These are aluminum and uh, aluminum for us in the US. And not only are they recessed beautifully, what's nice is you don't have to take it off to access anything. You can install strings right here and you can adjust it here. And I wanna show that to you. Let's go ahead and you can see here, normally where you'd have to take this off to take your screwdriver and adjust the claw back and forth here, you can do it with this adjustment right here, which is an Allen wrench and he's machined out and given you access to that. So that's beautifully done. For those of you interested in maybe adding this to one of your guitars, it's called the Sure Claw by Schaller and you can order it with the link I provided down below and upgrade your guitar. Then if we look over, he's etched in Valiente guitars, which is a nice, nice tidbit there. Internally, you can see he uses his own PCB boards. So this is what we see in Music Man guitars now. We're seeing it in, in Gibsons now. He's using a CTS potentiometer here. He has, these are 500K values for the push-pull pot tone control. 
Here's his capacitor for the tone control. And then of course, I love that he has the terminals to install the pickups at the top. So if you ever want to change those, you can. Your three-way switch is here. It's in soldered here. So the, the PC board says by Toma Systems. Now I have mixed feelings about this, of course, as a tech. This sounds like a headache for me to have to get involved with, but this is the kind of guitar where the creator, the master luthier behind it, he's really thought out every detail. So he wants you to have a, a perfect experience. In other words, there's nothing to want to get into these control cavities for. These back plates should never come off. And then we have a set neck, as I've shown you here, and it's beautifully done. He's, we, we call this the handshake and see how it feels. And of course, this feels fantastic. Um, it could be a little more angled right there for you. That would be a nice improvement to think about. Um, it would just feel a little bit better, but access wise, it's beautiful and it feels great. Neck, this is where it's gonna important. So before we give measurements, the first thing is they're calling this a C-shaped neck. Let's go ahead and test that. And I am well also seeing that is a C-shaped neck. So this would be more like the Fender C-shape. So let's go ahead and do some measurements. First thing you should have your nut width. It's at 42.34 millimeters, which is 1.667. At the 12th fret, we have 2.050 or 52.08 millimeters. Let's go ahead and check that thickness to see where it lands out. Now what's interesting is playing it and feeling the neck, it feels like a slightly chunky Fender neck. On the first fret, we are at 20.97 millimeters, 21 millimeters thick, which is not very thick, 0 0.825 on that. And on the 12th fret, we are at 0 0.901 or 22.88 millimeters, 22.88, sorry, I'm saying that so fast. So my point to this is, is that the neck is not super chunky, but it's not thin. This is not a shredder's neck. Although the guitar gives a little bit of a kind of modern player vibe to it, it does have a more traditional uh, kind of neck to it. So that I think a lot of players will like. He has a semi roll to the fretboard where it's not sharp, it's not harsh, it's not cutting in, but it's not extremely rolled. It's not like vintage rolled. Now, if you know, we always test frets. Now, these frets are beautiful. I've played them, test them. There's not a single dead fret. They are fantastic because not only is the fret wire amazing, the fret work done by him was great, but we do want to test a few things and uh, we use nylon socks. And the reason I do that is because this is a video forum. And so I can't, you can't touch it. So I can, but I can show you what it feels like. So using the sock, let's go ahead and, and test his fret ends to see how they feel. And there's not a lot of sprout, but it did come from Italy to Arizona. And you can see right there, just a little bit where it's catching. So I would give that a three and a half out of five, maybe even a four out of five, if I'm feeling gracious today. And on the base side, that is definitely like a four out of five. Now, here's where this is one of my negative critiques. So let me give you my first negative critique. He's using a Godot bridge. One thing that I don't like about certain bridges, they use taller screws, adjustment screws, and these stick out. And in this case, it is very <laughs> aggressively sticking out. As you can see here, okay? I'm gonna tore that so you can see that's, that's no good now. Okay, so let's use another one. They're going to probably bother some players. Uh, when you're going to play, you know, you're going to play in palm mute here, it's gonna kind, of, kind of stab into your hand a little bit. As you can see, very easily, I am tearing up this sock. So the fix for that is one of two things. You can get new screws. I've talked about this before, about using monsterbolts.com to get new grub screws to go ahead and swap out the tall ones for short ones. As you can see clearly right here, the difference between using the tall ones and the short ones. Let me go ahead and show you that to you. Go ahead and remove one of the tall ones. Replace it with a shorter one, as you can see right here. Now, some of you guys asked about what if you don't have access, and I understand that. Look, in a pinch, I've had to do this many times. You can take one of the longer screws and cut them down. I just put them in a vise, and then I use a Dremel. You just wanna make sure you don't do two things. Don't compress it so much that you damage it. And also when cutting, try to stay in between two grooves and then polish off the end when you're done so that there's no sharp edges that can cut into the metal of the bridge plate. And you can see immediately the difference of the taller ones versus the shorter ones. Now, as nice as I sent a clip of the issues I found to Luigi, and here was his response. I think it's a great review. Apologies for the issues you found. I will definitely address the fret ends, and the bridge will not have that potential issue anymore. Never thought about it, to be honest. Thanks for pointing that out.
Looking at these pickups, like I said, he made these pickups, so he's not using a production style pickup. Let's go ahead and check the bridge pickup. The bridge pickup sitting at 15.5, so he's winding that hot, um, more like a JB, I would say. That's what I'm going to anticipate this is, depending on what the magnet he used. The neck pickup is odd, because it's a 12.99 or 12.99. 9.7, I should say. Uh, so again, a little higher output. Usually, like if you're familiar with the Seymour Duncan JB Jazz, JB 59 setup, you would expect the neck pickup to drop dramatically into the 8K range. This staying at almost 13K, this is more like, uh, I would even say more like the Wolfgang pickups, more like a, like a mid high output pickup. So not something hu hugely aggressive. Usually the pickups I would go to if you really want to plug into a a mid gain Marshall and let it kind of push that amp over. I love pickups like this for that. Now I know what you're thinking, how many guitars does he make and how much do these guitars cost? Well, to date he's made just over 200 instruments. And as for prices, he posts need a quote, contact him personally. To give you a reference, I would expect to pay on the low end of the 4,000 midpoint to the high end of $10,000. But because he does such custom work, the prices can vary by a lot. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna run through my Bad Cat Jet Black. I'm gonna run a little delay uh, in the effects loop, uh, and I'm just gonna start with the neck pickup and uh, and give that a playthrough. Something else to point out before I start is that I'm uh, running through a 112 uh, Creamback uh, slush and speaker cabinet with an SM57 and a room mic. <laughs> What's nice is it's so warm, the neck pickup's so warm, but the uh, the guitar is really bright sounding. So you get a lot of warmth and clarity. Go ahead and coil split the neck pickup. This is the middle coil, both coil split. So let's go ahead and switch the amp to the clean channel now. The tremolo is just beautiful. in that middle position, that's the two single coils on a uh, clean channel. I'm 
Okay, let's go back to the neck humbucker. Good. You know, it just is a beautiful sounding instrument. It's a joy to play, that's for sure. <laughs> but what are my final thoughts? Well, I love it when a guitar is made so well that all I have to do is nitpick silly little things. Like the bridge screws are a very easy thing to address and he'll probably do that on all the models going forward. Other than that, you're playing a masterfully built instrument that plays and sounds fantastic. I just can't imagine most players not picking this up and loving it to some degree. I mean, I just can't imagine. He's executed everything beautifully. And um, those that are thinking about a high-end guitar, I hope this video helped you in some way. As always, I wanna thank you so much for your time. Till the next time, know your gear.